Hey, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in and watching the Cyber Sports Show brought to you by Coach's Corner, your go-to spot before and after the game. I'm Jeff Russell here with Mark Slovkov. Today we're going to talk with baseball player Nick Montgomery and head coach John Weber. And of course, check in with Mr. Pfeiffer in his segment, Would You Rather? Coach Slovko, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, a lot of things in the news, people wearing red today. Let's put all of that aside for a couple minutes and focus back on the students and, and get the update. All right, we got busy spring schedule, a lot of stuff going on before we hit spring break next week. Uh, the baseball team split their opening series with Tustin in the Empire League. Uh, despite a leadoff home run by Nick Montgomery, we gave up four unearned runs to lose four to three in eight innings on Wednesday. The team bounced back with a 10 to four victory on Friday. Team still ranked number seven in Orange County after last week's games. And this week, the team has a series versus Valencia before heading to Vegas for a spring break tournament next week. Softball team played in the first two rounds of the La Mirada tournament on Saturday, splitting the games versus Beaumont and Chino. Brianna Townsend was the only offense we had in the Beaumont game with the home run. And in the second game against Chino, Taylor Monteleone hit two bombs and Brianna added another one as they both had four RBI in the 8-3 to three win. This Saturday, the girls finish the second or the third and fourth rounds of the La Mirada tournament before opening league play versus Pacifica next week. Boys volleyball swept the opening week of league play versus Crean Lutheran in five games and a 3-0 sweep over Pacifica. Uh, glad we didn't jinx them last week having them on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking we were going to get it. The cream took us all the way to five. Uh, boys get uh, Valencia and Kennedy this week before spring break off uh, next. Boys tennis lost their two matches last week versus Yorba Linda and Sage Hill. They were set to open league play versus Valencia on Monday before lightning literally struck too close to home and the contest was postponed until April 15th. Track and field lost to Valencia last week in the Empire League meet. The boys had a rough day and the girls lost a close one 64 to 63. On Saturday, the team traveled to San Clemente for the Triton Invitational. Kaylin Krebs, William Masanha, Isaiah Garma, Benjamin Green all had very good performances in, the, in their events. But the breakout star, someone we need to keep a name on, Coach, is freshman high jumper Katrina Sokolowski who won her event with a five foot four jump in just her fourth time high jumping ever and has one of the top marks in the entire state as a ninth grader. So keep your eye on her. Track takes on Kennedy Thursday this week. Uh, Boys Golf won an 18 hole uh, contest for Cerritos last week as Ryan Slevkov was the medalist before losing a close match by a few strokes to Marina in windy conditions later in the week. Uh, at the Navy course, Ryan and John Padilla had the top scores for the Centurions. This week, they had a Monday matchup postponed in the middle of the contest due to the lightning, just like our tennis team. The swim team swept Kennedy on all levels last week in the opening meet of the Empire League. They take on Crean Lutheran this week before spring break next week. And the badminton team continues to run through league play so far, starting the season 6-0. and oh. Wow, Coach, who is our high jump coach? That, of course, is Dan That's Fault. That's right, Coach Fault, getting it done. Congratulations, let's keep that up. All right, it is time to check in with the head noodle around here. Let's <laughs> bring in Mr. Pfeiffer for the Subs and Grubs segment, Would You Rather? Mr. Pfeiffer. Gentlemen, check it out. So I was looking at our guest list today, right? We got Weber coming on. We got Montgomery behind the plate, right? Taking the swings at the bat. But before I have a Would You Rather for you guys, right? I know technology's changed with baseball, right? The stuff has changed, right? Nick wears that little airpiece, right? That means that Weber's hot mic, right? <laughs> <laughs> Would yeah. you rather listen to a hot mic Weber through an entire game, competitive game, on the line, important, or Coach Feldman during a competitive game? Oh, Ooh. yeah. Well, I think being in the dugout so many times with Coach Weber when he didn't have the headsets, I have heard the live <laughs> version quite a few times. And I've never really had a chance to hear all the things that go on uh, with Coach Feldman. So I, I would say I'd, I'd listen to Coach Feldman because I'm pretty sure I know what Weber's saying most of the time. I would, I would agree. With baseball, you can a little more intimate. You can hear more stuff if, if we're sitting in the dugout. Uh, with Feldman, we're never that close to the sidelines. So you only hear him if he comes real close to you, but you don't hear the normal 
uh, or every play interaction he has on the mics with his coaches upstairs. So I would take that one. I've heard Feldman when he's about 35, 40 yards away from me. <laughs> yeah. um, who do you think is going to be beat the most? No, no, let's go on. <laughs> would you rather, right? We asked a bunch of different athletes, so we changed it up a little bit. Would you rather baseball kid, would you rather take a swing with a pool noodle, right? Or swim through a pool through a noodles, right? When we ask golfers, we ask them, would you rather take some hacks with a pool noodle or would you rather swim through a pool full of noodles? So it's kind of interesting, different responses, kind of surprising. Check it out. Cypress High School, here we are with the younger Krebs. John Short, baseball. Miss Gaston, our counselor extraordinaire, Ryan Miss Erson, check it out. Lumberg, check him out. Who's taller? Who's taller? Jackson, Tone, and Ryan Schlepko, check it out. Mr. Boardwine, AP What's over that? Athletics. What's going on? How, How you doing? doing? I'm all right. Hang it in. I'm doing well, too. Yeah, sun's out. Feeling sun's good? Out. Feeling good. Would you I rather know. step into the batter's box with a pool noodle? Okay. Game's dependent on you. You got to take that chop okay. out. Or would you rather swim through a pool full of noodles? Well, I know it's pretty much physically impossible to do that. You might drown. So I'd rather try to hit a baseball with a noodle. Really? Even You're though it wouldn't work. Not gonna bite? Yeah. No. I heard you have a great backstroke though. What happened? Not, well. You don't want to risk it? I know what noodles do. Ball swing. How many hacks do you gonna take at that ball? I think it's better than swimming in noodles. I'm not a good swimmer. I, I sink. I'm dense. So I'll take my chances in the batter's box right here. With the pool? Yeah, with the pool noodle. Yeah. Swim through a bowl full of noodles. I like to eat. You go like to eat? You're gonna eat your yeah. way? Yeah, I like eating. Swim, swim. swim. in a competition swim. Full of with noodles? noodles? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever seen a pot full of wet noodles? Yeah, I'd rather do that than hit with the wet yeah. noodles. Yeah. What? I don't know. Yeah, you gotta swim. You oh, swim through that. Swim through. Swim through. Swim through. Swim through. Swim through. Swim through. Would you rather take golf swing with a pool noodle or swim? Swim. Swim. Through noodles? Have you ever held wet noodles? Have you ever swung a noodle? I'd rather swim through a pool full of noodles. Why does everyone say that? I feel like it would be like a once in a lifetime type of thing. Yeah. You know, it'd be like a cool experience. Like to like just swim through a pool. Swim. Through a noodle. Swim. Through a noodle. Swim. Through a noodle. Swim. Through a noodle. Swim. Through you could eat your way out too. Yeah, right? exactly. I feel like that'd be pretty good. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks, Mr. Pfeiffer. Matt, hit a baseball with a noodle or swim through a pool of noodles. Coach Weber, what, what you were saying, you <laughs> might pick swimming through the noodles? Well, I, I would potentially do both. I would, I mean, if I had to, right, if it's a win or lose, I'm going to probably swing the noodle and try and hit something. If I was more on vacation, I would swim through because I would just load the noodles up as a floaty. <laughs> no brainer for me. Uh, I've done that a handful of times, actually. Nick, I think I'm swinging the noodle. I mean, I do not want to be in a pool full of <laughs> Mike Brown noodles. What if you were facing <laughs> way, someone with a noodle arm? Well, sometimes he swings the noodle. So, oh, yeah. all right, we can get into that maybe later. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, we got Nick Montgomery here, Coach Weber from our Base Pro program. Thanks for being here today, fellas. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Of course, Coach. You guys always play one of the top schedules, not only on this campus but in Orange County. Obviously, you challenge yourself each and every year, and have done that since you became the head coach. How are the boys responding this year after the tough preseason and moving into league? Well, the schedule, I think, has just kind of become who we are now, right? You know, I think um, when kids come to our program, this is our expectation, right? Is that when we come, we're going to play the best the best schedule, and that's part of what we do. Um, so it's just become embedded into, into our system, I guess you could say. Um, then how are they responding? Well, you know, we're a very youthful group. Uh, Nick is there are really our only returning starter. Uh, position player, and then um, White Rosales is our only returning starting pitcher of any kind, and so of any innings. And so, um, obviously, when you play a tough schedule, there's less margin for errors, if you will. And so, you know, we started off very slow, and just having those youthful moments. Um, you know, we lose to Gar really in one inning where we had some youthful moments. We Lose to um, we lose to Notre Dame in an extra inning, and we had one youthful inning where we s screwed up, and 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 so and so on and so forth. And that's kind of how it's been. And we've been moving towards some goodness, though. Nice, nice, Nick. I mean, 
being one of the only guys back and knowing those challenges that coach puts up for you, do, do you like that? Yeah, that no, I mean, I think that's, that's what it's about, being competitive every single day. I mean, like you said, we kind of set the standard every year, having a tough schedule. Like, there's never really any free games. Um, I think the guys enjoy that, and preparing during the preseason, you know, you kind of get ready for what's to come, and I think that's good, preparing yourself for the next level for sure. Do you feel a little pressure being the only guy back with that schedule? Uh, like you gotta... I, I, I don't, truth be told. I mean, yeah, there's a little more you got to put on your back, but, I mean, all the guys, we've been working hard, so there's really no pressure. Just go out and play. Nice. Yeah. Very good. All right, well, Nick, I bet you didn't know that when you were a little kid, there were different rules in uh, high school baseball, and, and you couldn't participate on your high school year-round. Uh -huh. There's strict restrictions from February to May where you can do stuff after school. Yeah. Everything else was before school. Uh -huh. And now, baseball is essentially year-round, yeah. right? Uh, oh, you yeah. certainly played year-round yeah. uh, with your travel schedule, and then you come into the fall high school schedule, um, and then – the real season, how have you stayed focused throughout all of your travels uh, yeah. this year? I think it's understanding how crucial it is to, you know, make sure you're in shape and just creating a schedule for yourself that, you know, you can consistently follow day in and day out. I mean, we had this conversation my sophomore year where, you know, it was, I worked out the whole preseason and then the season came, I'm like, oh, you know, I can kind of hold up a little bit. But then we started to kind of see, you know, changes in my physicality. So just understanding that, how important it is to, you know, stay in shape and, that kind of keeps you motivated to go to, to the gym when you don't want to go. So you're you're lifting and you're working yeah, five, five days, year round. Three to four three to four days a week. Um, obviously you still listen to your body no matter what. You don't want to overload it, but you know finding that happy medium between you know staying in the gym and also making sure you're getting ready every day. Very good. And Coach Weber, how have you changed from uh, when you first started? We had the association rule to now. Uh, you got your guys uh, all school year. Well, it's like uh, it's like anything, right? Um, it's funny just listening to Nick. He, he used a lot of words that he and I have chatted about, um, and so it's like even today, like it's for you know, I'm not skipping the question, but it's like uh, yesterday at practice, right? It's really all about. I think as a coach, our job is to assess our players every single day and then have a com uh, a confidant like I have in Nick and like, hey, what's the temperament of the players? Is people hurt? You know, because everyone wants to play, so they're not going to tell you, oh, I'm hurt or I don't feel good. So I use Nick and balance ideas off Nick, and then we have some shorter practices, and it's just learning how to to balance those things. And, and to go back to the beginning of the year, um, it's the same deal. I mean, we start really, really late. And, and the truth be told, the reason why we start practicing late is because that's my only way of not uh, abusing them. Because they're not going to not do travel ball, and then they're not going to not represent us. And so it's my only way to really force them without forcing them or telling them they can't um, to not play to try to save them. So you're saying you guys talking and using some of the same words. Is it what were those words like work out three times a week with Coach Weber? Uh I mean, he that clearly and, works out three yes, times. Yes, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, listen to your body. Look, Nick, Nick yeah. is, and this is one of the things that's great. I don't know if this is a question you're going to ask, but, you know, I've been very fortunate in my time here to coach a lot of really, really, really good players. Um, and Nick is one of those. And one of the things that makes Nick a really, really good player is that he understands not just the stuff that we do, um, on our campus that the stuff that he needs to do in his own time and and Nick is a tireless worker and you know when you're young and you're vibrant and you're elastic you don't you don't break down and then when as you start to get 15 and 16 you, you get your first sore arm you're like what is this about right and he wants to go he'll go to practice go home and demand his mom to have a meal for him and she does because she Whoa. loves him and then he goes and hits for another couple of hours. And I'm like, Nick, you, you have to learn how to how to slow down a little bit. It was the same thing I had to do with David Fletcher. Um, you know, these guys feel like it's kind of something that's kind of um, in their in, ingrained in their DNA that they have to just continue to work. Otherwise, they're not working hard enough. Um, and so at some point, you do have to get to a point where you're listening to your body and going, hey, I'm good here. Right. It's, and it goes back to that old adage of, you know, hey, do I shoot 900 free throws? That means I'm better than the guy that shot 20. No, if the guy that shot 20, right, or takes the 20 good quality focused hacks is way better than the guy that takes. It's not about the quantity. It's about the quality. Right. So it's that kind of idea. Yeah. It's being adjustable and adaptable on those things. You kind of putting that into play this year. Mm -hmm. Right. You're moving uh, to lead off spot. Yeah. That's not necessarily typical for a guy like you. Right. Yeah. Do you like being the leadoff guy? How was that yeah. adjustment? No, I mean, I, I've enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was a little change of pace for sure after hitting fourth the last couple of years. A little different, but, 
you know, setting the table and just getting on. I think it's, you know, when you start the game off like that with, you know, either whatever, a walk or double or a home, even a home run, had a couple of leadoff home runs. Um, I think it just kind of sets the way for the game. So I've enjoyed for sure being there. Is that, I know a lot of times with coaching, you want to move them up to get them more at bats, right? Is that one of the focus? That's one of the focus. I did it with Josh Vitters years ago too, a lot of years ago, uh, funny enough. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he's um, kind of the, the table setter, if you will. And one of the things that uh, might be misconstrued by Nick because of the size is that he's actually pretty fast. And not only is he pretty fast, and he's worked hard at that, by the way. He's very astute. He's got a pretty good baseball IQ. And so he has the green light. And so he steals and, and does a lot of those other little things, too, that some of the other players just aren't quite there. So, Nick, you moved from the cleanup hitter uh, to the leadoff hitter. Yep. And you've also moved from first base the last couple of years mm -hmm. to your primary position now yeah. as catcher. How yeah. has that transition been being the everyday catcher? Mm -hmm. You got the headphone on this year, <laughs> listening to Coach Weber, yeah. calling pitches. Uh, how's that transition? No, been? I mean, it's been good. And I, I enjoy being back there, especially, uh, you know, being the you know kind of leader in, in a way. I think being at that position, you know, being vocal and just kind of leading the guys has been, you know, good for us as well as, just, you know, leading by action. But um you know, I love catching. You know, I'm gonna work hard at it, do as long as I can until someone tells me not to. Um, so yeah, no, I, I've liked it a lot. Obviously, I, I've known my role at first base. You know, we had Brandon and Max, two you know really good catchers. So now, kind of taking that over, it's been uh, it's been cool, but still for sure a lot of work to be done. And how's the body talking to you, catching it, so many innings? It's good. No, I, I for sure spent more time this year. You know, working on mobility and staying, make, making sure I'm you know staying healthy. So I've done a pretty good job of you know being you know pretty precise with that. And are you slated to catch next year at Arizona State? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, catchers in your future. Yep, there hopefully. Well, uh, this past year and hopefully in the future, uh, you coach the USA baseball team. It's quite an honor to be able to coach for the country. How was that overall experience for you? What'd you gain that you can bring out to to our teams here? Um, well, obviously, anytime you have a chance to represent your country. Um, and wear that uniform, it's pretty special, no doubt about that. Uh, the process was long and arduous, to be honest with you. It starts in the summertime, and it's a lot of hot days in Arizona and a lot of sweltering days in, in North Carolina. Those days are fun, but not great fun. Um, and just trying to, you know, analyze talent and, um, and then start to put a board together, basically, and then, and then bring them all together for the trials and then... Uh, the culmination of the trials is picking the 20 best players in the country at that age and then going to represent your country. And this year we we did that in the Dominican, which uh, was pretty cool um, from the standpoint of just going to travel and seeing another part of the world um, to see how they work and how they do things. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, we're, we're – the coaches are all staying together, and so I'm getting to know these coaches that I've known for a while, but get to know them a little bit more intimately because we're spending so much time together. Um, was uh, really, really cool, and it was a great honor. Uh, in terms of what I bring back, you know, we learned some new things from guys, and I'm always trying to learn, um, just like I tell the players. Um, and so, you know, just little things here and there, and, and sometimes it's, it's just reinforcing what we're doing. Um, is right, and, and then we're changing some things, and then we're bouncing some ideas off of other people, and that's the great camaraderie of coaching, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Nick, uh, you personally, you were a perfect game All-American this last summer. You were a finalist for Team USA, yeah. so close. Um, and, and now as we get into the middle of your senior year, we're into league play. What are our uh, team goals and, and your personal goals to finish up the year? Yeah, team goals, obviously, it's always to – the main focus is to win a league title. I mean, we've done it for I don't know how many years in a row. So that's always the goal. And then, you know, on top of that, win a SAG championship. That's something I've dreamed of since, you know, I came to Cyprus and I know the reputation that, you know, they've done. So I'm hoping, you know, this year we could, you know, finally be the year to do that. And then for me, like the personal accolades, I feel like those will come, you know, just focusing on winning every game and, you know, being the best teammate I can, those will those will follow with um, with time for sure. That's right. If the team does well, you might you might exactly. be having a good year as well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So. All right. Well, we have now come to the point of the program. We do some fast action questions. Don't overthink them. Whatever comes to your mind first. You guys ready for both of you, Coach Norman? Let me just do the player. But well, we're throwing you in on this one too. You ready? All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you could trade places with one person for one day, who would it be? 
Uh, Mike Trout. I don't know. That's a real tough one. There's so many guys I would love to trade places. You got to be quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, quick, one, fast uh, action. One fast day, action. One I'm day. a slow action guy, I think. Uh, uh, slow twitch guy. Not fast twitch. <laughs> slow, slow in the thought. There's just, too, there's. I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. There's just too many. Pick Athletic one. guy. I'll say Jeff Russell. I think he's got a good gig. I know Jeff Russell. <laughs> if an ice cream truck pulled up right now, like back in the old days, you hear the music coming. The ice no cream brain. truck pulls up right now. What's your order? The SpongeBob, the SpongeBob ice cream one with the little face on it. Forget about it. Doesn't even have in my day. <laughs> an Astro Pop. Astro Those of you don't know an Astro Pop. Look that's the up. three layer, red, white. It's American, by the way. Red, <laughs> white, and blue. The best. Those things are good. Yeah. What's your go-to karaoke song, Coach Weber? Oh, I don't do karaoke. I'm a horrible singer. My wife reminds me of it every time I sing, and so does my daughter. Uh, but I'm gonna go Bon Jovi. One of them. I don't know them. all of them. Living on a prayer. That one is good. I feel like the standards is party in the USA. Yeah. No matter where you, no matter where you go, you can sing along to that. This is a good one. Last time, your best road trip ever taken with your family. Best bike. Oh, could be with your kids or when you were a kid. Um, well, we did a trip not that long ago where we uh, we flew with our dog as well, and we stayed in New York City, uh, right next to. Uh, Central Park stayed there for a week, and then we flew from there, went to the Appalachian Mountains, which was really cool, and then we drove down the mountain and stayed in Nashville um, for, it was my first time in Nashville, this was a handful of years ago, uh, it was a great trip. Nice. I think mine was New York too for that Cooperstown little gig when we were 12, just going around the city, that was probably the coolest thing I've got to experience. Favorite breakfast cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. My wife doesn't let me eat that stuff as anymore. As a kid. As, as a, a kid, kid. Well, I was a honeycomb guy. I was a life guy. I mean. Life? Those are heard of anymore. Life. Yeah, yeah. cinnamon life. The mm-hmm. best. Especially so, when it gets saturated. Golden Good grams. milk. Yeah, <laughs> a little grams. soft. Two items you can't live without. A baseball and food. What specific? Specifically, food? give me In-N-Out Burger. I'll do one of each too, and it's pretty sad as a 55 year old. Can't live without my phone anymore. I am sucked into that thing for sure in every way, shape, or form. I mean, when I leave my house, I don't have it. Anxiety. I start sweating, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> um, and then let's go food. I think I'll go with In and Out as well. A double a double? Standard. Or oh, you're yeah. a double, quad double. guy. You're a big guy, so probably a quad for you. I'm a double double guy. I'm too double guy. Animal, animal style. Animal fry. Nick, first on this one. We're going to do a race. Which coach of our coaches can win a race around the bases? Ooh. All the way around. First of all, can they get all the way around? Yeah. Uh, mm, Should we just say I, I, I don't know about this guy right here. This we'll guy go all the way around. He's going to race. Who's going to win? Um, all the coaches or just the varsity coaches? The varsity coaches. Oh, I think that was pretty simple. I got Shorty. Shorty's the young. Shorty's Take the Shorty out. All right, I, got, I got Stan. Then Stan. 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 Yeah. Stan's yeah. moving. Yeah, in order. In order. I'm going to give you the order. Yeah. It would be, it would be short. short. He's the youngest, yeah, yeah. right? And then it's probably going to be Stan. Stan. Okay, now well, maybe, Stan, maybe. Stan or maybe Double C. You know, Double, double C, C plays. Oh, he's yeah, he runs he's, the you know, he's the the next, a little thicker on the, the top half, three. but I think his legs move Keep going. Good. We got Double C. Now we got the last then, two. Then probably, well, I mean, I got a bad, I got got a bad Gary, will right Gary now, right? Like a Gary than Will. Yeah, I got a bad will, but I think I would take Gary under normal circumstances. Keep that in your back pocket. We told you you're not running hard enough. All right. Well, hey, thanks again to Nick and Coach Weber for being here today. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, Subs and Grubs and Coaches Corner. Get out there, support them as they support us. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next week.